Um, my name is uh, Kenny Bass. Um, I'm going to talk today about domain language throughout tests, combining DDD and BDD. So who's familiar with DDD? Who's familiar with BDD? So who of you are software developers, testers, product owners? OK, great. Well, nice show. So I want to, I want to uh, tell you a story of how I became a software engineer. I am what I am today now. And uh, is it on? Or? No. A anyone in the back can hear me? No. No? no? It's quite soft. Microphone. This. And mic. This no, one? No, it's only for the camera. Oh, it's only for the camera. I try to speak a little harder. So um, today is a story about how I became an engineer and uh, what I'm doing now today. So online you have a lot of uh, <coughs> these tests that can show you who you are as a person. So I'm talking about Belbin or about the colors or about personality tests. Who's ever done such a thing? So who's ever done such a test? Just some, uh, sorry for that. <coughs> there it is. So uh, this is the uh, Myers-Briggs one. Anyone done this one? Yes. Great. So I've done it, and actually my personality is a campaigner. And it, and it tol told me a lot about myself. And the really important part is that it gives you strengths and weaknesses. And I advise you all to do it because uh, <coughs> it, it's something really personal. So for me, it's the, the, the strengths is my curiosity, right? So it's uh, open-minded, seeing all things as one big mysterious puzzle called life. The downside is I overthink too much. And I started working at a firm, a big firm in uh, the Netherlands. It's an insurance company. And I started working at the asset management part. And um, within three weeks of getting there, and it was my first job, um, they, asked, they came in and it was horrible. We lost two and a half million euros in the systems. And I'm like, why are you coming to me? Are there? So the other guys were ill. So it was all up to me to fix the problem of two and a half million euros. And later on, uh, it didn't sound so much, but at that point, as my first job, two and a half million sounds a lot. And I'm like, crap. OK, I'm going to solve this. So I, I barely knew the system yet, because I was three weeks in. So yeah, I turned my ways to Confluence, right? Documentation. Well, yeah, that was outdated, right? It's wikis is where documentation actually dies. So. The second thing I did was actually opening my IDE. And we'll take some time. And this is actually the project. And uh, it's not about the code, but it's about the experience. So uh, this is the code. So you see a lot of classes. And at some point, I start looking at the major class. So I opened up the class. And uh, I'll zoom in a bit. Here we go. And OK, OK, OK. <laughs> yeah, and this, <laughs> this goes on for, well, 2,400 lines. Who's ever experienced this? <laughs> Great. Well, this is my talk about how did we get here. So yeah. I was like, two and a half millions, this is my code. Shit, what, what do we do? So, <coughs> just a second to, uh, it's not joining anymore. Never mind that. So, the thing is about that code is it works. It was the most important code there was, and it actually worked for like 15 years in total now. But there was a problem. So the problem was I couldn't understand the code. It took me several months, even years, to actually know the code. So I started looking for answers because, yeah, it's one big mysterious life, right? Everything's connected. <coughs> and oh, that 
about my profile. So here's a little thing, and this is a test. It's called the two trains test. Whoever heard about the two trains test? So the question is, there's two trains on the same track running towards each other, 50 miles or 50 kilometers an hour over a track of 150 kilometers, and there's a fly in between. And the fly is 75 kilometers an hour is flying in between. So the question is, what, how much distance does the fly fly when the two train collapses? That's the question. So there's this great mathematician, Van Neumann, and he was giving this question, and the guy instantly, okay, this is the answer. And the guy was really disappointed and said, yeah, you know the trick, right? And he said, what? Trick? I just did in my head. One second, bam. But this guy is, 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 is like smart. And I can tell you, I can't do this. I can't do this. But the trick is, if you know the total time the fly is traveling, one and a half hour, and you're giving the fly speed, 112.5 kilometers, right? It's an easy abstraction to solve the problem. So now I can solve the problem. Not Van Neumann style, but I can still solve the problem. And the same thing we learn at school with atoms, right? So atoms is really, the atom itself and the electrons are really complicated. We, we cannot grasp the complexity in it, but we can actually <coughs> calculate with it. You, you learn it, I, I learned it at 16, 17 to calculate with it, and I didn't understand the fast grasp of an electron or how it runs, but yeah, I can actually uh, solve the problem. Because it's an abstraction, I can learn and I can easily write. So that's, and if you read Donald Knott Literate Programming, who knows that part? He says, let us concentrate rather on <coughs> explaining to human beings what we want the computer to do. So Hal Albums says, program must be written for people to read and only incidentally for machines to execute. And when I look at that code, that was executing. It was not for me to understand that code. But it did the job. And for me, that's the point I started reading Eric Evans' book. Because, well, in my way at that point, I saw, yeah, that's the answer. So I still was in a problem. Three, two and a half million lost, uh, shitty code. Um, so what I'm going to do next is look at the tests. Yeah? So I, the first thing is the code was unreadable. Well, maybe the tests will show me what this program does. Tests. Who recognized these sort of tests? It's Java, but uh, test by transaction. Well, if I run this and it fails, what, what, does, it, what does it tell me? Literally nothing. Again, it tests something. And it goes OK, so there's something happening there. And well, before I figure this one out, I'm probably 15 minutes. But back then, maybe one hour later, and I know what the hell is doing, because I need to run through the code and see, well, assert equals weight, investment transaction. What's an investment? An asset account, OK? I didn't know the domain back then. So there wasn't any TDDing going on. Because TDD is actually a real good mechanism to create code that's testable. And if you create code that's testable, then easily the code will be, be better designed. But the code 2400 lines make a test for that. That's not testable. So this wasn't done also. But that was old code, so I could get it. But the test itself didn't explain it to me. So. Um, just a second, I'll try to fix this. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Sorry for that.
So the second part I looked at, and I need to get this out. So the second part I looked at is, okay, uh, TDD is great, but let's see how there's acceptance tests. So in the Netherlands, we have a special thing called a functional beheerder. It's an application manager. I read about it online, but I haven't seen it being used in other countries. But these guys are actually, uh, these person are actually there to control the system. So I went to them and I say, do you have any tests for me to show me what the system needs to do in, in, in your mind? So they're sort of like a <coughs> domain expert. They couldn't give me that. They got scripts in Excel, right? Like click this, click that, do this. And it didn't explain anything. So what I was looking into next was BDD. Because there wasn't a model with, with the domain experts and, and, and ourselves. And BDD, well, it might be the answer. But the problem with BDD is a bit that it's a bit misunderstood. Um, this is not BDD. And I've seen it reading a lot. Well, yeah, we're doing it BDD style because we're doing given when then. Well, that's not BDD. And uh, Paul Reiner is here, a friend of mine. And he made a really nice illustration. I actually talked about it. He thinks it was a bit horrible. but. Um, this shows exactly what BDD is. And Dave Snowden actually just said it in his key talk. It's about the exploration. It's about the discovery. And this part is the important part. And this is actually on the Cucumber <coughs> side, right? So people saying we're doing BDD because we're using Cucumber. No. This is important. And Cucumber only comes in, might be coming in here. But this is the most important part. And why? It's all about that bias, that observable bias. So when you're standing under, when it's dark outside, and it's called the street light effect, and you're looking for your keys, they're not there. They're outside in the dark. But it's scary outside in the dark, because this is the known. And we want to look for the unknowns. And that's called discovery, deliberate discovery. And here's a problem I see a lot in IT about these new things coming up. Cucumber, microservices, blockchain, and we're using it without knowing what it does. And there's actually a song about this written by Oasis. Anyone know Oasis? It's called Morning Glory, but it's, it's a bit different. So th the song starts like this. All your dreams are made when you're chained to the mirror and the razor blade. Today's the way the world will see. Microservices, right? Dancing, yay. Another sunny afternoon, walking around with my favorite tomb. Tomorrow, never know, does it doesn't know too soon. Eh? Blockchain, we're going to use blockchain now. It will <laughs> save the world. <laughs> but yeah, we might need a little time to wake up. Everyone knows it. We need, we need to wake up. What's the story? Aha, it's about the story. So anyone who knows the song knows the second part of the song? It's exactly the same as the first part of the song. And this is what we're doing in IT. First it's maybe BDD Cucumber, was microservices, now it's blockchain. And I've been in this conversation with people and they say, I got a problem. And they say, I want you to use blockchain. I'm not saying, well, blockchain isn't really good for this. But I want you to use blockchain. <laughs> Shit. So it's all about that story. <coughs> so DDD in my thing is about empathy, know, eh, knowing each other, knowing the model. BDD is about what's the story. What's the story of what we're building? <coughs> OK, so back when I was young, I got my first computer. And I started playing games with it. And um, yeah, I got my brand new computer. So I'm starting experimenting with the computer. And I found this thing called FDisk. Anyone heard about FDisk? Yeah, within 15 minutes, my whole computer was wiped. It didn't have anything. But it was my computer. And through that, I learned how to use the computer by experimenting. <coughs> trying, failing, trying, failing, trying, failing. And, well, you know who now at Christmas fixes everyone's computer, right? <laughs> Kenny, you're doing IT. Can you fix my printer? Yeah, that's me. But that's because I got the opportunity to get my own computer and started experimenting with it. 
and somebody fixed it for me and then I broke it again and I think after eight times I finally figured out what FDisk did. Um, but I was young, so. Uh, and this is for me software development and Alberto really says it correctly. Software development is about learning. The working code is a side <coughs> effect. And he actually sent me to read a great book and the book is called Black Box Thinking. Anyone read it? Great. So it's a great way to learn from our mistakes. And you need to make mistakes, else you won't learn. It's a key factor to success. <coughs> it's also really hard for people, because if I'm successful, I cannot fail. Especially doctors, right? If I fail, I'm out. But actually, it's a key learning point. And Elon Musk actually uh, showed this last time on his Twitter. Don't mind the sound. <coughs> this is about his... Yeah, and this goes on and on, millions and millions, right? But this is the way he got it to land. Failing, 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 failing. And this is what we are afraid of in software development, in my opinion. And there's actually one particular area that's really successful in failing, and it's science. Science is really good at it because it has this, this, this hypothesis, we're doing, we're checking, huh? and we're acting. Is this good? Yeah, keep using it. Is it bad? No, okay, we are stop using it now. So actually, um, when you think about the boiling point of water, that was a test, it's 100 degrees. But it isn't, because later on, someone actually found out that when you go into the mountains, it's not 100 degrees anymore. And science actually, well, evolved like that, but just by doing experiments. And if you look at the field of software development, there's one uh, practice that does it really good. It's continuous delivery. This is all about science. It's all about feedback. It's all about improving yourself. And this wasn't done back then. So what I'm telling it's about we need a little empathy, we need a bit of story, and we need a bit of science. And this is the combination for me be between DDD and BDD. But Today I'm now going to focus on testing. So I think DDD is already catching up a bit. The code is already more readable than that code I just showed you. But the tests are still lacking behind. So the first thing when you go testing and at some point you figure out it's the test pyramid, right? Every, everyone heard about the test pyramid? Anyone ever Googled the test pyramid? Look at it. It's awesome. Such a ubiquitous language, that testing pyramid, right? If you look at it, it's around UI service unit, end-to-end -end test, integration test, unit test. And it goes on and on, and it gets bigger and greater. And this is a concern for me, because I don't think this focused on the story. It doesn't focus on empathy to the build towards the business. It is maybe a bit of science, but this isn't for me a useful map. So when I look at continuous delivery and you look at the cycle of continuous delivery and you look at uh, what Dave Farley says, an example continuous delivery process, and if we map that pyramid onto here, I miss something. Because in my opinion, you have three feedback loops that are the most important ones. And the first is, of course, an ID. There needs to be an ID from the business. I got this ID. We need to check it. Is this ID reasonable? Do we want to continue with it? That's why we do A-B testing. I'm not going to talk about A-B testing uh, today because it's a whole other subject. So when we got that ID, the devs are going to write, going to write software. So at some point in the pipeline, they'll do a commit. And within that build stage here, it does a unit test. So it's checking, is my test correct? Later on, it does acceptance testing. And that's the important part. And these two are the most important. And I'll tell you why, if you look at 
at the feedback loops. It's the ID, it's the executable spec, and it's the unit test. And why do we have these, the difference between it? Because executable specification run long. Can run long, can be short, but can run long. But we need instant feedback. We want to fail fast. That's why we have unit tests. And that's why, in my opinion, we have this cycle that's the most important part. We have our BDD cycle, write failing feature test. Afterwards, write a failing unit test, make the task pass, refactor, refactor. Well, you go on. So I'm not going to talk a lot about TDD, because last year there was a great talk um, about this talk, about Romeo. <coughs> he talked about property-based testing. Here, there's a hands-on session. If, there's, if it's still available, go there. Property-based testing will improve your TDDing, will improve your design, and improve everything. So I'm not going to discuss this. What I'm going to discuss is the BDD part. So the first thing I want to discuss is who owns the feature files. And usually what I see in the big companies is that a developer writes the test or writes the codes and the unit tests and it throws it over to QA. There you go. And then QA comes back and he says, well, you're doing it wrong. And then says, no, it's working on my machine. And like, I call it the ping ponging. And that's not, there's no continuing in there. It's ping pong. So in my opinion, the, the people <coughs> responsible for the, unit, uh, for the BDD test, so for the acceptance test, are the software development team. And there can be testers inside, of course, because you still need testing. But the only person, the only person who can break the acceptance test are the developers writing the code. It's behavior. So why not take responsibility for the thing you create? How do we do that? Let's, let's get an example. So there is, on some places now, they, some teams ditched out the tester, which is horrible. You still need exploratory testing behind. And they're doing it themselves now. And especially, I'm going to focus now a bit on the UI testing. So let's take, let's take a user story. So navigation by public transport. In order to know the fastest route between two places, as a commuter, I want to get to my destination as quickly as possible. So I use Google Maps to say, well, I'm here want to go there, fix it for me. That's basically the story. So uh, the code I usually see written nowadays is this one. It's with WebDriver. Who knows WebDriver? So WebDriver, you can talk to WebDriver and, s and it will click on your UI. And you can say, do it with Chrome, do it with Internet Explorer. But this is the code. <laughs> and if you're not familiar, it's TypeScript. <laughs> But uh, you can, the first problem is if you don't know the language, you're screwed. So what, what is actually going on? Okay, it's navigation by public transport and it navigates by public transport. Great. So it does a get and, and yeah, still not great, right? I don't know what's going on here. So what I see nowadays people doing is getting cucumber in, right? BDD, Cucumber. So let's have a feature file. So given intercity trains from Utrecht Central Station leave at blah 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 when Connie wants to travel from Utrecht to Amsterdam. Okay, this is already a bit more. Now I know the intention. Now I have my acceptance test. This is the code for that acceptance test. Still don't know what the flow of the system is. I know my intention which is good because this is a communication thing. Cucumber is meant for communication. This is meant to show my business, my stakeholders, look, this is what the system does. And they can understand this. But as a developer, when I look at this, I'm like, what? What, what, is, the in, what, what, what is the implementation and the intention? So this is all about intention. The first part I see wrong every day, by the way, is that you place intention things here. So I'm opening a browser or I'm visiting a web page. No, this is all about business behavior and intention. But here I want to have something more, right? So what, what is it then? So I want to have a flow. So nowadays there's a really nice um, 
mapping. It's called feature mapping by John Smart. Anyone know John Smart? Feature mapping. So within feature mapping, we'll have the story. We'll figure out some actors. We're checking flows and tasks. Then we do some example mapping. So the examples are rules that those are the intentions. And then we'll execute it as specification. So let, let's just take our story. So some actors might be commuters and trains. This is not really important yet. I'll tell you why later this is important, but it's, it's not important yet. So then we go to flows and tasks. And flows and tasks in uh, feature mapping is just figure out the tasks. I go somewhere deeper. So here is where I'm going to start combining DDD and BDD. First thing I'm going to do is event storming. Who's done event storming? Great. Really advise you to, to, to go to Alberto's workshop. So the first thing, because we're in a GUI stage here, uh, because I need to show something, but event storming, you can go as deep as you want. Here, I'm just checking the commands and the domain events. So I start with domain events, what's happening, and I start meddling with some events. Example, I need to choose an origin, and I need to choose a destination. <coughs> so this is a plain, simple example. But it's all about starting modeling here. Start modeling your system here. right? So I'm starting with a blunt, naive event storm. Doesn't do a lot. But this is enough. I think, OK, this is OK. So we'll leave it at that now. Second part I'm going to do is example mapping. Whoever done example mapping? This is out of the cucumber hat, out of the BDD hat. So I'm going to tell you a bit more deeper about this. So you'll have a story, and a story will have rules. So a rule might be uh, when you go to online to an Amazon or a cool blue or a bull.com in Netherlands, <coughs> you'll have some, you, 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 you can order something. And when you order for 20 euros or above, you'll get a free delivery. So a rule might be if the order is 20 or above, you get free delivery. And now we start doing the friends episoding. The friends episoding is the one where. So you're just figuring out examples. So in this case, I just showed you about uh, Bolpecom or Cool Blue or the Amazon one. It's OK, what if it's refrigerators? Is it still free delivery? What, what if there's someone ordering from the United States? Is it still free delivery? And you go on and on and map that. And this is the discovery phase, right? You're just flipping on examples. And, there, and there's one thing really important here. There needs to be a domain expert in, in the room. Because he can say, well, this is not important, or we're doing this, or we're doing that. If there is a question, though, and this always happens in refinements, if there is a question, and someone says, well, yeah, John, he knows about this, and I think it's like this. And you meddle for it like 10, 15 minutes in refinement. You know this one? It's a question. You pop it up there. Nobody talks about it anymore. Because you make sure that guy will be in the room the next time you do this, this refinement. So if, if it's assumptions you make, questions. Put it on there. Don't talk about it in that session. OK? That's example mapping. So you come up with a lot of rules. And you have your, exam and you have your event storming there. So you have your model and you have your rules. So the rules for, for the commuting can be, um, well, what if I'm at station? What if I'm not at the station yet? Or what if I'm later? So come up with examples. And the key point is to have testers inside the room, have domain experts inside the room, have developers inside the room. So, OK, so we have our event storm, our naive event storm model. We'll have our examples now. And now we can transport this into our application or into our tests. So I'll, one, of this, one of this rule will be our feature file or our test. So a rule equals a test. And then you have several examples, and that will be the test inside that rule. <coughs> so over here, you'll have uh, your before. You're setting up some data and stuff. So I'm not showing you here. But then. I had a command called choose origin. Here it is, choose origin. 
I had a command called choose destination. Choose destination. And now inside my test, I have the same flow I used in my event storm. My event storm will be the model in the code, so it matches. And here we'll have a consistent language. But we need to be really disciplined to keep this up, right? So we need disciplined developers for it. So choose origin and choose destination goes a bit deeper. So I'll have here a choose origin, choose destination. Because it's a GUI, by the way, I always, uh, I always say plan and journey. And I go to the site. So that's not part of my model, but it's part of my uh, test. Because I, I need to go to the application. But here I have uh, a function called the choose origin. And only over here I start using the implementation of the system. And here you see WebDriver being used again in a small function where I just say, OK, find this element and just send, send this key to it. So here I say, choose origin Utrecht Central. Here you see, choose origin, and the string will just be sent in, in, in that thing. And I, in here, I still use the page object, where I say, this is my input. So anyone who's done testing will know, well, it's a CSS check, and you, you will go in. Good. So this is already great, because now I understand my test code. So I can go to my acceptance test code. I can go there, but I can also do it in Cucumber. And here you see the same feature file just wrote, but this is readable, I hope, for most people to understand. This is your DSL. Plan a journey, choose origin, choose destination. Now I know the flow of the system in my tests. Because the flow of the system can be different than my model. My model can change, but the flow stays. Right? We can upgrade this a bit. And there's a screenplay pattern for it. And here's where the actor comes into play. The actor we just previously said. And the tasks I just mentioned are this part. You can go to uh, Serenity, the page, and you can read more about this. But it's a whole new talk to more talk about the screenplay pattern. But what I just told you fit natural in this screenplay pattern. And it's all about these tasks, because the task will tell you the flow of the system. Now, a side effect, uh, a good effect of Serenity JS, yes, if anyone used it, if I use their framework and I put this screenplay pattern in, I get something like this out, a report. And this I can show to my uh, product owner, and she can click through, and she can see the flow of the system in a nice report. Very good for enterprise, corporate environments who wants an audit trail. Not saying you need to do it, but it's a nice side effect, right? I use it, sometimes I don't. So the key point here is we need engineering practices, right? Because else we'll be productive alone. So they're really smart guys, a lot smarter than me, who write terrific code. I just don't know what, what they're doing. But if you're working in a team, it's important to have a language that everyone keeps understanding. And the language needs to go back inside the code and end <coughs> inside the test. That flow really gets you in. So if this, what I just showed you, happened in that code I opened up at the start, I wouldn't have I would have less trouble understanding the code. So you can easily jump, get in a ju junior developer, and he can understand, start understanding the business just by reading the code. And code is there for, to read what the business needs to do. So to wrap up, we need the DDD empathy. We need the story from BDD. And we need a little bit of continuous delivery science, so to speak. We need to combine these, and it can be perfectly done in your refinements with event storming and with example mapping, just to combine them. And that's a little cat text for you. Questions? No one? You talked a little bit about that uh, acceptance test uh, can run for a longer time. Uh, yeah, can. If you want to uh, deploy your code after every uh, story delivery, 
delivered mm -hmm. and it's having a, a long time to ring test is blocking that quick uh, important to production. How did you solve that? Uh, it can. It, it really always depends, but let's go a bit back. Uh, did you face a problem? Or not? Yeah. So the really important part for me, I think, is go to trunk-based development first because you want to have this feedback as short as possible, like max five minutes. So here the, the, the developer himself is responsible if something fails in this part. Then at some point it go to acceptance test. And that can run a long time, but that doesn't really matter. If it is, it must be really important that it runs that fast. You can, there's techniques to get it faster. And the technique is to isolate your acceptance test. And I showed it a bit um, here, but here you set up environment data and stuff. That needs to be specific for this test. So data for your test needs to be only used for that solely test, because if you do that, then you can run in parallel. And that ups the speed of your acceptance test. But there, it's 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 a all other talk, and I would advise you to check acceptance testing for continuous delivery by Dave Farley. He will explain how you can upgrade your acceptance test now to properly acceptance test. He can do it much better than that. But the key is, test needs to run in isolation, production-like. In short. Any other questions? Your example shows um, bindings um, to the UI layer. How do you think about uh, binding to more lower layers features? Yeah, so sometimes uh, when you're in an event storm and you're, you're having a surface, then you just go straight to the rest surface. So it, it's pick, pick your battle. So the UI usually don't have that much of complexity in, I think. It's more like a user experience. So some parts, like uh, figuring out if an order is, um, is free, 20 and above, I can probably run that on, on the surface, right? So I do it on the surface. So here the pyramid is really fine because it says, well, UIs are really hard or are really expensive. Lower levels are less expensive. But I always need to, to test uh, my behavior in a production-like system, but then I just use the REST interface. But I do it in the same style. So in, instead of going to the UI, I go to the REST service, but the style will be the same. Is that answering the question? Perfect. Good question, by the way. Have you had any experience handing off your current files to QA team? <laughs> saying, OK, I made some tools for you. Go ahead and plug in everything you want. Not, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so Cucumber tests are part of your team. So if you're in a continuous delivery team, it's for the team. So a QA can be in your team. I advise that, by the way, because then you have an autonomous team. And he can write it or I can write it, but everyone needs to be able to write it. And there also needs to be a review, like guy, uh, people, do you understand this? And that's what it's for. But it, you don't actually need to do a Cucumber, as I showed you here, because this will already explain it to the rest of the developers and most QAers nowadays can understand this too. And only, <coughs> only if you need to communicate to stakeholders, then the cucumber parts <coughs> comes in because it's a communication thing. It's an it's, it's, it's abstraction <coughs> with regexes and everything, so it, it, you have more work to keep it correct. So it's more effort, so only use it when you communicate to people who don't understand this. So this is only great, the feature file is only great for people who cannot go into an ID. Okay? But it's the team that writes the feature files. And I've seen anyone doing this and it fails miserably because yeah, you'll have mismatches. Anyone else? Well, thank you.